Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so today we're going to be doing a two-component extraction. Uh, let's start by introducing our unknown. I chose number 13 because my birthday is on the 13th. Uh, so within this unknown is a combination of two different compounds. I've got acetylenide and I've got 3-chlorobenzoic acid. Um, in order to separate these away from each other, I'm going to use the uh, removable proton on the 3-chlorobenzoic acid to transfer it to a aqueous layer. Um, so let's get started with that. Um, so I've already measured out one gram of my mixture here, which is gonna go into a set funnel. Benzoic acid is currently protonated. So when I add a solvent, just to get everything dissolved, I'm going to use diethyl ether. Uh, all, both components are going to dissolve into it. So I'm going to use 20 mils of this. shaking to be done. And I'm going to use just a little bit more 
uh, bicarb bicarbonate solution to try to get any remaining out. And I don't need to be super precise with that first extraction draining step because I'm just gonna throw more water in here. So this one is a five milliliter extraction. Just to double check. And let's shake again. And to be super, super thorough, I would typically continue doing this for several minutes uh, until the gas stopped forming completely in the container and then for a minute past that. And I'm already starting to lose almost all of my gas right now. But clearly the second extraction was necessary because we saw, had some gas formation occur. So there was still some three chlorobenzoic acid that we had to keep roping. All right, that's no more gas at that point. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the bottom layer, which is the bicarb layer with the uh, chlorobenzoate in it. Uh, this time, I'm going to be a little bit more cautious and try to get my extraction so that I'm getting all of the water out of this. Um, later in the lab, I'm gonna show you um, that I'm gonna dry this top layer with sodium sulfate. Um, and if I leave a bunch of water combined with this top layer, if I leave like a whole drop of water, it's gonna take a ton of sodium sulfate to get rid of that. So at this point, I need to try to get the entirety of the water layer actually let a drop of the top layer uh, go through into this. Um, that's going to end up hurting the purity of my 3-chlorobenzoic acid in the end, but only slightly, and it's worth it to improve the drying step of this later. But before we even worry about uh, the acetylenide, which is up in this diethyl ether, let's go ahead and isolate the three chlorobenzoic acid, uh, which we have removed from the system here. So the way I wanna do this is I would like to precipitate out my three chlorobenzoic acid by acidifying it, uh, and then I'm gonna collect it by uh, vacuum filtration. Uh, so when we reacidify this, it's gonna go from an ionic species, which is soluble in water, to a non-polar chromated, uncharged 3-chlorobenzoic acid, which is gonna be insoluble in water, so it's gonna collect on itself and form a solid. Um, the way I'm gonna do this, thank you. The way I'm gonna do this is by adding tiny amounts of very concentrated hydrochloric acid. 12.1 molar, it's the most concentrated that they tend to ship it. Um, by using really concentrated acid, I only have to use a small volume of it, which is nice and convenient. Um, but I do need to be careful with this. So I've chilled this a little bit because acid-base reactions, um, along with gas, they do tend to release a bit of heat. Uh, and so by chilling this, I can just calm down the acid phase reaction and slow it down a little bit. Just double check that you can see me on the counter over here. A little farther back, perfect. Uh, so there's a 
specific technique that I'm going to use when adding this acid. Uh, I'm going to pick up a little bit of acid in my pipette, put it into my container, and I'm going to swirl this as I add the acid. Maybe you can see I'm getting a bit of a white foam, it's getting opaque, and that's fine. Um, what can go wrong with this is if you just squirt in a bunch of acid, you can see it foam up. Now, if I was not being careful, I would create what is essentially a baking soda volcano and all of my product would spill all over my work surface here, and I'd lose it. So by swirling between drops, I can make sure that all of that acid gets used at once, or um, I can make sure that all of the acid that I drip in gets used before adding in the new acid. starting to see some solid chunks appear, and that's good. That's that 3-chlorobenzoic acid, which is being probated. And I'm going to know I'm done when adding more acid does not result in a foam forming. Because that means that all of the uh, benzoate that the acid's reacting with is done and used up as well as the uh, carbonate, which is in the water. Alrighty. So, I've got a solution here, which has a bit of solid, which is just persisting, or it's just existing in the liquid. Um, and I'm starting to ask myself, is, uh, have I added enough acid? Am I done adding acid, and can I collect the solids in there? I'm going to use a pH test to determine if that's true. So here's our pH paper. It starts green, and if it touches something basic, it turns blue for basic. And if it touches something acidic, it turns red. So what I'm hoping has happened here is that I've gone from uh, a basic solution, which the bicarbonate started as, to an acidic solution. Because an acidic solution is going to uh, allow me to collect the most solid possible. So it has turned neither blue or red. I'm getting kind of a sweet beige here. Um, and according to my pH chart, I'm probably sitting somewhere between 7 and 6. Um, so this is not nearly acidic enough. I would like to bring this down closer to 2 or 3 or even 1 to make sure that I properly acidified all of the benzoic acid and so that I can collect all of it. I've added another milliliter or so of concentrated hydrochloric acid, and I now have what is approximately a slurpy consistency. It is just packed with solid. It's much more dramatic. So I'm just going to use the other side of the same pH test strip and check this again. So I've got a little red spot there, so that's promising, but for the most part, still pretty beige. I've got a little bit more acid to add before I know I've collected everything. And so at this point, it looks like mostly everything is solidified, so I'm just adding a little bit 
and swirling and pH testing. This is what acidic looks like. I've got a bright pinkish red here. Um, this is probably sitting at a pH closer to one. Um, so at a pH of one, three chlorobenzoic acid is going to be almost entirely protonated. Uh, so I have, with this, uh, pH, I should be able to collect the most amount of through chlorobenzoic acid possible. Um, so, without belaboring it too much more, um, I'm going to go ahead and vacuum filter to collect that solid. I'm going to hit it with some ice water first just to suck down the paper to the plastic. There's a ton of product still on the walls of this flask, so I'm going to collect that with some ice water. by using ice water at this step, I'm just trying to avoid uh, dissolving the product. I want it to stay solid so it gets caught up here in my filter paper. And I'm going to use the last of the ice water in here to just clean uh, off my filter case. Just to wash out any impurities which are still stuck up in the solid here. Now, I know for a fact that this 3-chlorobenzoic acid is actually really good at hydrogen bonding. Even if it's not soluble in water at this point, um, it has a pretty strong attraction to water, and so it takes forever to dry. You get to skip that, um, but actually while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and prep uh, my diethyl ether layer here so that I can rotavap it and collect the acetylenide in this layer. Yeah, let's turn off the vacuum for now so you guys can hear me. Um, I'll continue drying this at a further stage. Um, so, thank you. I've got a collection flask for my uh, acetylenide diethyl ether layer. And let's go ahead and collect that. Now, whenever you shake your organic solvent with an aqueous uh, solvent or an aqueous solution, you are going to get trace amounts of water in your organic layer, uh, which are going to mess up your rotovapping stage and you'll never get a nice dry product. So we're using sodium sulfate again. Sodium sulfate chemically bonds with water, solidifies it so that it can be left behind and it won't go into the road about. And I'm checking, looking for chunks of sodium sulfate because this stuff gets sticky when it contacts water. So the stuff that I've initially added here, that all found some water to react with, so it's all sticky. 
but hopefully my next scoop will go in unaffected. Because if it stays as a tiny grain, then I know that the sodium sulfate did not find any water and the solvent is dry. So while the initial stuff that was sticky is always gonna stay sticky, I now have some free flowing tiny grain sodium sulfate, which tells me that I've added enough and all of the trace water has been removed from the diethyl ether. Um, so now I've got a nice dry organic layer packed with acetylenide. Let's go ahead and transfer it to my pre-weighed round bottom flask that can go onto the rotovap. I'm just gonna decant, leaving the solid behind. over to the road map now and let's remove the diethyl ether and see how much acetylenide we have. Oh, um, so we're back at the road map, which we used in the caffeine lab. Um, the operation is going to be the same where I put my reaction flask on the end here and clamp it down nice and securely. And then we roto before vapping. So we're going to get that rotating and drop it down into the warming bath, which is going to prevent it from getting too cold because evaporation chills things down very quickly. Um, so I'm going to close my air vent here and turn on my vacuum, which is going to build up vacuum in this chamber so that as uh, the vapors evaporate out of my reaction flask, they can be collected on this very, very cold um, grand condenser. So if you come down here, you can see just a ring of white solid which is forming as we evaporate off our solvent. And ether is very volatile. Um, and so it's going to rotate very quickly and we should see it turn into just a plastered snowball look here very soon, right about now. And once I see that, I like to let it go another like five seconds just to get any trace ether. And we're done. Such a quick way to remove 20 mils of ether. So in order to get that thing off, let's kill the spin, kill the vacuum, and gently let the air back into the system. And ta-da, this is really nicely dried. Um, I can see a little sparkle uh, on the crystals of solid that I have here, which is promising that it's nice and dry. Um, so uh, this is my acetylenide product, which I'm gonna get a weight and a melting point for you guys. Um, and we can take it back to our 3-chlorobenzoic acid product as well, uh, so that we can collect the same data for that. So here's our 3-chlorobenzoic acid product, and this has been drying for maybe 10 minutes and it takes forever to dry. It's gonna take a minute. Um, so even after 10 minutes of pulling air through it, I still have this chalky, sticky, white solid. Um, and I'm gonna to continue to dry this for another 30 minutes or so until it's actually a powder. And I know it's gonna be dry enough and it's gonna be done when I can pick it up with my spatula and drop it and uh, it's not damp, it's not sticky. The stickiness is how I'm going to be able to tell when it's done. So uh, I'm gonna finish that up and get you guys the mass and melting point data of this product as well.